So, are you surprised, really? So a guy by the name of Josh Gates decided to use forensic science to recreate Queen Nefertiti. What he came up with is this. Two, three. Wow. And there she is. Oh, hell no. Oh, wow. Isn't she amazing? Yes. She really is. So how, did, how do you reconstruct? How did, and, and how accurate do you think this is? I think it's extremely accurate to the mummy. The, the forensic I'm legally are blind. able to do an extremely good job at looking at the tissue, depth, determining muscle, and all of that. And so what we're looking at here for sure is King Tut's mother. We know genetically that this mummy is King Tut's mother. We so know that for TV, That's right. We know that, we, we know that Tut's father was... Basically, a European. Now, what would it make me upset? Because they do this all the time. But it's Black History Month. So, Black History Month is a time that people pay close attention to our history. Especially our kids who don't really know about Egypt and the places that we come from. So, for them to put that out there like that and put that on the show like the morning show is really disrespectful and it's hurtful due to the fact that they don't respect our history. They're just whitewashing our history forever. And the only thing we could do to stop it is educate ourselves. Because if we don't get to know the things that is about our history, they're going to keep whitewashing it. And at the end of the day, there's not going to be anything left to prove the stuff that we did in Egypt and other places in Africa. Africa is rich. Africa has a lot of wealth and a lot of resources. So they're in Africa all the time, doing a lot of different things, poking around and changing things and stuff like that. I stress the 25th dynasty due to the fact that the 25th dynasty is a dynasty that is known as the dynasty of the Black Pharaohs, the Kushites, an area called Nubia in Southern Sudan, the Blue Nile, the White Nile. We never stress the fact about the 25th dynasty, Kingdom of Kush. The Kingdom of Kush was an ancient kingdom in Nubia, located at the confluence of the Blue and White Nile River. It went on now Sudan and South Sudan. The Kushite era of rule in Nubia was established after the Bronze Age, collapse and disintegration of the New Kingdom of Egypt. During the New Kingdom of Egypt, Nubia was in Egyptian colony from the 16th century BC governed by Egyptians. With the disintegration of the New Kingdom around 1070 BC, Kush became an independent kingdom centered at Napata in modern northern Sudan. The Kushites buried their monarchs along with all their courtiers in mass graves. Archaeologists refer to these practices as the pan grave culture. This was given its name due to the way in which the remains are buried. They would dig a pit and put stones around them in a circle. Resistance to the early 18th dynasty Egyptian rule by neighboring Kush is evidence in the writings of Apples, an Egyptian warrior who served under Emotep and Akhenaten. At the end of the second intermediate period, Egypt faced the twin existential threats the Hyksos in the north and the Kushites in the south. Taken from the inscriptions on the walls of the tomb of chapel, the Egyptians undertook campaign to defeat the Kush and conquer Nubia under the rule of Emotep I. In utmost writing, the Kushites are described as bowmen. Now after his majesty and slain the Bolton of Asian, he sailed upstream to upper Nubia to destroy the Nubian bowmen. The two writings contain two other references to the Nubian bowmen of the Kush. So the Egyptians was in turmoil for the Hiskos for the south and the Nubians. Egypt's international prestige had declined considerably towards the end of the third intermediate period. Its historical allies, the Semitic Canaanites of the southern Levant, and had fallen to the Middle Assyrian Empire, 1365 BC to 1020 BC and then the resurgent Neo-Assyrian Empire Empire. So basically, no one can steal our history unless we let it. There's a wealth of information out there. There's the internet, there's the books, there's a library, and there's different places. Like in England, they hold a lot of our history. So it's just up to us to go out there to try to find out our history 
and things of where we came from and stuff that they're not really going to let us know. Because basically America is going to hold us back from anything that we do. It's a country that was built on slavery and basically they came and they took stuff and they suppress a lot of different things. And it's not fair to the kids that we have coming up these days because there are a lot of things that we had when we was coming up that's probably no longer in existence. But if you dig hard enough, you can find whatever you need to find. And it's not hard to find out things about Africa and stuff like that. And people stress Egypt a lot because the rise of consciousness and everybody wants to be about Egyptian because they have policies and the pyramids and stuff like that. All those things are fascinating, but we have a lot of different kingdoms in Africa all the way down to the Zulu tribe and Shaka Zulu and stuff like that, and the Moors, and a lot of things that we were doing down, doing in Africa. Africa is a huge continent, so there's a wealth of information, and there's a wealth of kingdoms more than just Egypt. So I like to stress the fact that we need to find out more about our culture and more about the kings and queens throughout Africa, not just one civilization that's been nitpicked throughout to all different types of cultures that has lineage towards Egypt. Egypt was, back in that time, it was no different than New York. It was like a trading post. They had so many different people coming in and out of Egypt. So it's a wealth of culture in that place. So it's not one person could say that it belongs to them there. So I don't know why people like to talk about Egypt like that and like to be all into Egypt. I know it's beautiful and stuff like that, but, you know, we need to reach and dig a little bit further. So do you hear?